The last new adjustment layer I'd like to talk about today is a black and white adjustment. There are several reasons to convert a color image to a black and white or a grayscale image, and even more ways to do it in Photoshop. Depending on your needs, a black and white adjustment layer may be a good option. Please note, using a black and white adjustment layer does not change your image's color mode. If it is currently set to be an RGB or a CMYK image, it will still be an RGB or a CMYK image when you're done. You'll just be perceiving the image as being in grayscale or black and white. A benefit of using a black and white adjustment instead of changing your image via image mode and then grayscale is the channel depth of your image. A grayscale image has one channel of color. An RGB or a CMYK image has three or four channels of color respectively to pull colors from allowing for richer blacks and so you get better tonal ranges when you have more channels of color to work with. Another benefit of a black and white adjustment layer is the ability to choose temperature presets that create unique and distinct black and white images. Some may work better or worse for your needs, but feel free to experiment with the various options available via the properties panel. Let's jump over to Photoshop and we will demo hue and saturation adjustments and we'll make it as an overall adjustment and an adjustment via a selection. We will use color balance to fix an image with color casts and I stole the images from your skills practice. So if you're going to do the skills practice for lesson 11, we're going to do that together in the next, uh, well, in the end of this video. And then finally, we'll use the black and white adjustment layer to see the different options that are available via presets when making a black and white adjustment. Okay, so let's jump over to Photoshop. I have a few images that I pulled off of the Open Graphic Arts website. This little image with the flowers, a windmill image, and then I grab these glasses, and these glasses I found on the internet because I don't have any images of glasses with the color cast to be able to show you. And so let's start uh, our little demo here by talking about hue and saturation adjustments. And I didn't want that to happen, so I'm going to undock that. In order to make a hue and saturation adjustment, you will do it just like we have been doing for all of our other adjustments. Select the layer that you wish to apply the adjustment to. I'm going to make it an actual layer first. Hit the little black and white cookie or the new adjustment layer icon. And then this case, I want you to find the one that says hue and saturation and make that selection. Nothing happens because you have to use the properties panel to make an adjustment. And there are there are a number of ways to use this panel. And so the, the very basic way is for me to take the hue slider and slide all of the values in the image. And so you'll see all the colors cycle. I'm going to focus on the pink flowers and I'm going to slide the hue slider until I find the color of the pink flowers that I want to be. And so I'm not going to pay attention to any of the other colors in the image. And as I slide to the right, it's being more and more red. Now it's cycling to be orange, green, teal, if we go back the other way. And it's doing a good job. It doesn't look too artificial. However, if you pay attention to the rest of the image, let's say that I wanted blue flowers, um, it affected the entire image. It did not just affect the area that I'm looking at. I can't just slide this until I find the right shade of blue for my flowers because the rest of the image has crazy colors now. One benefit of the adjustment layer is that it automatically creates a layer mask. So if you wanted to, you could come back with black and you can paint on your layer mask and you can basically erase the adjustment. So make sure you have 100% here and I'll make the, the brush bigger so you can see. You can kind of paint your original colors back into your image, do a better job than I'm doing. Um, but what, one thing we did already learn this semester was you can do a color range selection, right? And so if we, let's just delete our hue and saturation adjustment. If we're proactive before we make that hue and saturation adjustment, we can use the select menu and color range to make a selection of just the colors in the image that you want to adjust. And so what I recommend is use your little eyedropper outside of the dialog box and click the pink area. And then I'm a huge fan of this, the fuzziness slider. And so you can use the fuzziness slider to keep sliding until you get all the colors that you want to change. That's probably too much, and so I'll back off until I just get the flowers. And so now with that selected, if I make a new hue and saturation adjustment layer, I automatically created a layer mask, so it's only going to affect the area that was selected. 
And so now I can slide my hue and saturation slider until I find the right color for my flowers. And then maybe I don't want to have it be as drastic, so I want it to have kind of a yellow tint to it, but I come back and I lower my fill, so I kind of blend the colors back in to make them look a little bit more natural. Uh, one of the benefits of the adjustment layer is that you can always double click the adjustment, the little icon to the left of the layer, and I can come back and now that I've adjusted that saturation so it's a little bit more subtle, I can slide this until I get the exact shade of color that I want for my flowers. And I kind of like the purple, so I'm going to leave that there. Okay, the next example that I want to show is the color cast. And so when you are working with images that have bright reflective surfaces or clear glass type surfaces, uh, you may find that your images have kind of a yellow tone or um, a cyan or a blue tone or even a pink tone to them. And one way, I keep doing that, one way to get rid of that is to apply, I'm going to make this a regular layer, an adjustment layer, and this time we are going to do a color balance. And when you do the color balance, you'll have some presets on here that will allow you to make some adjustments. And so if you can look at the image and determine there's too much pink or magenta in the image, I can move the magenta green slider towards green, and it will pull all the magenta out of the image. Now if I go too far, I basically flip my color cast. I have too much green now. But if you make little small changes, you can start to pull the color out. And maybe there's too much red, so you pull it a little bit away from red and towards cyan. And what you want to do is you want to make it look more natural instead of looking like it has a color cast in the room. Or maybe you're doing it for a design aesthetic purpose and you want it to look like maybe you combined images and you're in a room with like a dance party and strobe lights and things, and you want the glass that you put on the counter to look like it's in the same room as the other images and all the people in the room, there's like a, a blue spotlight in the room. So you can come here and you can slide it more towards blue and you can make your image look like it has a blue spotlight on it as well. Uh, when you're doing the skills practice for Lesson 11, what I want you to do is try to remove the color cast. And so pick one of the images and figure out which color we have too much of. Apply a color balance adjustment layer. And this one probably has too much cyan. So move it a little bit to the right until it looks like it doesn't have a color cast. Until it looks natural. You can see this one has too much yellow in it. And so we can apply a color balance, balance adjustment layer, and maybe move it a little bit away from the yellow to remove the color cast on that image. Last but not least, I would like to show you how to use the black and white adjustment layer. And so if we apply an adjustment layer, so hit the new adjustment layer icon, choose black and white, it will convert your image to be a black and white photo, but you don't have to stop there. There are a ton of presets, and so if you look at your properties panel and you click through these, I'm going to click through every single one so you can see it, it will do different things to your image. And so I'll click blue, and you'll see it looks completely different. Whether it's right or wrong, I have to make that decision, uh, but I have that option. You can go, I like that better, I can see the color in the background, darker. This is the green filter, this is the highlight contrast blue filter, high contrast red filter, I kind of like that one infrared, lighter, maximum black, maximum white, neutral density, red filter. I like the red one too. I tend to like the red one a lot actually. Yellow filter. And so you can not just have kind of a default desaturated washed out image. You can choose one of these presets and then you can have more kind of pop to your black and white image. You can go above and beyond that if you want, and you can adjust the red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magentas, etc. in your original image to make them darker. So you have to remember what the colors in your image were. But you can make those colors darker or lighter. And so if we turn this off, I can see that the, the I don't know what these call, are called, these wooden bars, they're green, right? And so if I wanted them to pop more, I can go to the green slider and slide them to the left and they'll become darker. Or if I want them to kind of fade away, I can go to the slider and slide them to the right. And I actually, I thought I was going to like it better if they were darker, but as I slid it to the right, they actually pop more off the back. 
Now this sail was an orangey red color, and so if I slide it to the right, it should get darker. And you can kind of determine where you're going to have the dark, dense colors in your image, uh, like cyan's, and blues are your skies. If you want to get rid of the sky, slide it to the right. If you want more of the clouds to come in, slide it to the left. And you can work on creating a custom composition for your black and white image.